Right. So we've got the benches together. At this point, we just need to get the seeds that we collected into pots up there and start growing the plants. And then hopefully sometime next year, um, we'll have um, enough seedlings in order that we can do some out planting up at Holland Paha Group. And again, there was actually, maybe worth mentioning, at the invasive species discussion at the Environment Committee, it was an interesting conversation about the pros and cons and pitfalls of out planting native plants and doing restoration around facilities. Um, the example given was how the Department of Transportation has had some issues with being very successful with some of their or out planting activities in that they eventually find that they have um, endangered species around, you know, endangered insects that are liking their rest restored site so well and then they've essentially inadvertently introduced or created habitat around their facilities for endangered species and so then they have take in the accidental take issues that are created by their restoration efforts so just to, just being strict the point being be strategic in where we do any kind of restoration so that um, we definitely want to do restoration and promote that promote habitat for invasive species but not be promoting it right outside a building where it just creates other issues down the road with that uh, take any questions. Uh, Fritz, is the honeybee activity associated with commercial beekeeping? Not up at that elevation, as far as we know. The lowest, or the highest elevation honey commercial activity that I'm aware of is along the Mono Road, which is a couple thousand feet lower. Thank you. The uh, swarm traps, uh, do they have an impact on any other species, particularly any endangered species? No, not that we've ever observed. Um, we did have some wasp traps out for a while. I don't know if we mentioned this at the last meeting. Yeah, you, you that did. We're catching in native in danger, or native species, rare native species. Right, yeah. Which prompted this question. Yeah, yeah, but the swarm traps. No, it's um, it's just an empty fiber bucket, and once honeybees find it as good habitat, the queen gets moved in. Once it's the goal is once they're established then we can, we check them once a week, then we can remove them um, and address any problems. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Fritz. I apologize, Roger. I didn't mean to overstep my bounds. It's just for the last three uh, chairman of that committee, Fritz has been tasked with presenting the report. So oh, yeah. I uh, assume that that uh, practice would continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't as much my mistake as Thank you. Uh, don't go anywhere first. Uh, new business, uh, the action item is self bill meter array. with the seven millimeter array is here um, they actually there was a I don't recall the date that the law changed but Hawaii state law changed and requires um, additional leak detector sensors on any underground piping or underground tanks the SMA tank is above ground but there's a short stretch of existing underground piping between the tank and the building so they to comply with the law they need to install a, a leak detector um, and while they're at it, the signage standards changed for fuel storage tanks, repaint the tank since they're putting new signs on it, um, that kind of thing. And quite frankly, I think we're going to see a few more of these similar proposals for any, because it applies to anyone with an underground fuel tank, so anybody that, or piping, so anybody up there that has that, that didn't already meet the standards. But frankly, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. There's not a lot, but they're about don't recall if there are others or not offhand. Um, and then they also, SMA is also having um, problems keeping their computer rooms, correct me if I'm wrong, cool enough. So they, um, it, it with switching to remote observing, something that we've been promoting as a way of reducing impacts, but that means more computers and uh, to keep up with that, install an additional air conditioning unit, which um, sort of right adjacent to their other air conditioning units means a little bit of piping on the outside of the building. Otherwise, it's all internal. Did I miss anything, Alan? Okay. Great. Uh, thank you, Fritz. Uh, this is an action item, uh, board members, so the first uh, point of order would be to address the 
classification, the staff has recommended that we uh, designate this project classification as minimal due to the nature of the work. Uh, can I get a motion to uh, agree with that designation? So moved. Moved and second. Aaron. All right, any questions or concerns about the designation of this uh, proposed action as being minimal impact? All right, if not, I'd like to take, uh, excuse me, question. Additional noise generated by the additional cooling unit, and if so, how much? No, the, the unit is internal to the computer room, and so the noise will be limited to the interior area. Um, there is a compressor unit that is on the outside of the building, and it is in the same area as um, others that are there. We have a, a lean-to structure against the building, so it's pretty much the same. Have you ever received uh, complaints, noise complaints? Never. Thank you. All right, uh, we've got a motion and a second to declare the proposed action uh, to, uh, designated as a minimal impact. Uh, all in favor of such a designation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The uh, second action is to approve or disapprove the project uh, with the conditions as circulated by staff. Uh, can I have a motion, please? Move to approve Move. with the Move by Roger with the conditions of second. Hannah? Second. Second by Hannah Springer. So we have a motion and a second. Now, any questions about the uh, proposed action, uh, the recommendation, or the conditions as pro uh, proposed by staff. Yes. So I, have, I wanted to clarify on the procedure that you're going to use because you're not going to use a shovel to access an underground uh, pipe. Can you elaborate a little bit on, on what you do to mitigate any risk of uh, fuel leaks in the process of potentially penetrating through that pipe? The fuel piping currently has a shield around it and also there is a warning tape just about six inches above it and the reason for going to a hand dug method is to minimize any possibility of damaging the piping so hand excavation is the best way to do it presumably you would also show off the flow from the tank before you actually Oh, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Sim simple things like valve. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Of yeah, course. When it isn't a question. It's a, it's a comment because Fritz had mentioned other uh, underground storage tanks. CFHD has one as well. That's about a 5,000 gallon tank. Uh, we would love, by the way, to sell the contents of that. If there's a buyer of diesel fuel um, uh, at a good rate. Uh, and our long term intention is uh, to uh, very likely remove or uh, in some Way it's compatible with statute, uh, disable the tank and, and relocate something much smaller than size. So that and SMA are the only two that I'm aware of on the summit in terms of uh, fuel tanks. Thank you for the information. It's good to know. All right. Any other questions or comments about the action, the conditions? If not, we have a motion and a second. So I will call the question. All in favor of approving the. Uh, action as uh, recommended by staff and with the conditions as proposed please say aye. aye aye any opposed none opposed the action will then carry thank you uh next item on the agenda to our busiest man today fritz the uh, mauna kea invasive species management plan and that has been circulated to the board quite extensive thank you for some long hours of reading we want to help uh, insomnia all we can on this. Um, yeah, so the comprehensive management plan includes an action item um, to basically develop an invasive species management plan. Um, this is a first draft of that. Um, with that, I want to introduce um, Dr. Kaz Vanderwood and Heather Forrester, both with the Hawaii Ant Lab. Um, Kaz is the brains behind sort of the strategy and how to how to spell it out in terms of a risk mitigation method. Um, a fairly standard. The more I've been doing this, it seems you know, 
fairly well recognized and looking at other international programs and programs around the state, the way things really seem to be headed. Um, let's see, find my notes here. Um, so specific, you know, the memo, the accompanying this spells this out, but just a few main points. This is a first draft. It's not 100% complete. We, since sending this out, um, we've gone to Kahu Kamana, uh, to the Environment Committee. Um, there are a few adjustments that have already come to light in that in that time. We're at this point, we're not asking for a detailed um, set word by word review. It's more, are we on the right track? Are we hitting the main points that we need to be? Is the emphasis is the strategy going to work in general? Um, we're asking for comments by December 15th uh, from all of you, as well as Kahukumana. What would happen then is we'll go back with Kaz and Heather and staff and update this and finalize the plan, as well as a couple of appendices, which we'll get to in a moment. And then in advance of your next board meeting, there would be a final version submitted for a, f a full review and uh, potentially approval um, and so that would be the process there the way this is envisioned is there's a main plan that you were provided with that spells out the general principles and policies um, that's fairly static and then there's a whole suite of appendices that um, sort of are more illustrative of the adaptive management principles of the comprehensive management plan that we expect to change fairly frequently. So, for instance, the cleaning and inspection requirements are two separate documents. Um, they're not, those policies aren't detailed in this main plan. This just spells out what we're trying to accomplish. And then the actual appendices or the SOP, standard operating procedure, says, okay, this is what is required for vehicles to be clean going up or what we expect of individuals going up and down the mountain. Um, and then as administrative rules come into effect that we have the policy in place, so we can just, it's a minor update to the policy to say, okay, now, now, now that we have the rule in place, we just have to edit this policy to apply to other users besides the permitted users, the commercial tours, the telescopes and whatnot. Um, let's see, there's one, a few main points that came up, um, there's a sort of an edit in how this it will get approved. Stephanie was able to meet with DLNR staff last week. Um, DLNR does not, as I understand it, does not want to approve this whole plan. They have, we do send them, there are several DLNR members are on the Environment Committee. Have, this has been distributed them, to them for review um, from a technical perspective, but from a permitting perspective, they don't want to approve the whole plan Rather, they want to uh, approve the individual land uses that might apply. So um, we'd be submitting, once it's ready, um, anything, pulling of weeds is considered a land use. Any sort of mechanical or chemical control of weeds is considered a land use. So only that element would go to DLNR for formal site plan approval, not the whole plan. Otherwise, the approval process as envisioned would be, we'd still run it by the Environment Committee and DLNR staff for technical input if they have an, if they wish to have any input. And then once the Environment Committee has approved it and made any comments and DLNR, and we've worked out any issues with DLNR technical staff, entomology, botany type, um, NAR type staff, then we'd come to to all of you with amendments to the plan as needed. And actually the appendices that are would be updated fairly frequently, we'd probably be having some form of amendments at most meetings from here on out, just because some of them might just be simple. We're cha we changed this appendix because the contact information changed and not even bother to run it by you unless somebody really wants to see it. So, and otherwise, um, two things that came up in the environment committee meeting. Um, one is um, concern about cultural offerings and how do we address issues of cultural offerings, the plants, um, the offerings, the food offerings that are brought up that uh, by the public, um, that it's a little bit of a different, um, different nut than everything, than the other, 
you know, commercial shipments, the observatory stuff, we can require them to have to stop and let us inspect it. Or you know, we don't allow the observatories to bring plant material up or food material other than what they're going to eat. Whereas the public brings plant material up all the time, um, and so that's one of the greater greatest risks in many respects. Um, and yet, it's one of the harder ones to address. Um, Giovanni was mentioning, maybe, you know, outreach materials, which is how Heather. Um, Heather's role with the Hawaii Ant Lab is helping with outreach, so that definitely outreach once we have this a little further along will be very important. Um, the other item that is still a little bit to be worked out is pesticide use, um, both in terms of emergency response, if we have something like Argentine ant that shows up and we wait to do an environmental assessment, we're basically saying we can't do anything because a year or two later, by the time an environmental assessment is approved, we'll have missed the opportunity to do control, as well as if there's any prophylactic use. Um, within Hawaii administrative rules, that's a fairly straightforward approval process. However, um, we need to go to the OEQC under, and have a conversation with them and make sure that we're clear on what the university exemption list applies to and what it does not apply to. So with that, Kaz, did I miss? Do you have anything to add? No, no, brilliant. I'm just going to sit here and listen to Fritz talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite happy. Keep on going. Keep okay. on. I think I've said enough. Well, uh, thank you, Fritz. I, I do think it's it's really vital that this uh, invasive species plan is, is thorough enough so that you do have all the tools you need to act quickly and appropriately without getting caught in some sort of 343 trap where, you know, we uh, we have to sit by and, and, and let uh, something play out when we have tools to deal with it. So oh, yeah. I encourage you to be yeah, very thorough. Thank you. Uh, board members, questions? No questions. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me. Could I make a comment? Yes, sir. Uh, one of the problems with this plan and any other kind of plans we're going to come up with basically is that uh, the regulations will apply to those who use the facilities uh, as a owner or, uh, you know, um, somebody who's there commercially. But the public is one of the biggest areas that needs to be regulated. These islands are great. <laughs> But yes, most most susceptible to extinction because of its isolation. That also gives us our best seeing because of the uh, how the air is coming across. Unfortunately, all of these invasive species, the ants weren't here. But for less than a hundred years ago, there's no ants. <coughs> Same with mosquitoes and so on. So the people who bring it in do it probably inadvertently. However, if we have the oversight of uh, regulating or so now there's a concept between what we call culturally kapus you know, regulations and NOAA being free and usually there's a konahiki but then it seems like you guys are starting to come up with plans and so on that's only going to regulate those you can regulate do you bring in the general public so if you uh, don't bring in the general public no matter how good a law or regulations you guys have about ants or whatever, it's not going to work because I will bring up my uh, offering, and I think Fritz will, Fritz will uh, verify this that where the ants are coming in is where people are bring, brought, bringing things in, and you know, <laughs> when they don't bring things in, there aren't the ants. So, uh, how do we address besides the board just taking care of the the users the observatory and uh, the operators who come in with their tours, the general public. And that's a greater um, overview that, that needs to be thought about. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, and, and obviously they are of, of concern, and we're hoping through uh, developing all of these plans, but the development of our rules, that we can address these issues uh, for, for public use. And, the issue, I think, of road closures, I think, is interesting because, uh, you know, we had a, a road closure that was not instituted by the Office of Monica Management, and 
we need to be able to respond to all these issues, and I think our rules are, are going to have to address all those things. But thank you for your comment. Uh, we do have our Kabu Kumano representative now. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, does the office of Mauna Kea have management ever submit testimony like to the legislature with regard to, um, for example, the Department of Agriculture, who has, I believe, purview over um, monitoring incoming materials to the state? And does the office ever comment on, on their budget and, and recommending um, increasing uh, budget and staffing to um, limit or the, the importation of undesirable species given the sensitive area of Mauna Kea. That's a good point, um, Kihalani. No, we have not. May you? Is we could. I'm, I don't think there's anything that prevents us from it unless there's a policy above us. But. It's, it's something we should probably consider. I, 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 yeah, perhaps working with the Environment Committee and, and Fritz, because we're, we're addressing this, this issue midstream when there's a, a headwater, which are the terminals that materials um, come into the state, which are the, the, the vectors for these invasive species that now we're dealing with um, on the mountain. That's a good point. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Um, so, uh, regarding Kahukumana, well, first of all, I'm Shane Nelson uh, from Kahukumana, Kalamae, for um, arriving a little late. Um, Kahukumana, recently we just had our uh, retreat to collaborate with new members on the board to um, increase uh, informed decision making um, when we're giving. Uh, a task from the Office of Mauna Kea Management, we'd like to be able to uh, increase a more informed decision making. So at our retreat, we we're able to discuss uh, our mission, our role um, in, in this process. And uh, part of that was that we'd like to start uh, even indulging in the CMP, the cultural monitoring, uh, the cultural management plan a little bit more and to uh, increase our position as far as outreach is concerned for the cultural aspect of, um, of the uh, management area. Uh, all of this we just met in um, uh, yeah, last week and uh, so things are just starting to roll into place at this time so hopefully at our next meeting here that I could give a more thorough and informed report as to where we're at. We still have uh, two more seats available to fulfill. Um, we're operating at a minimal capacity right now uh, and hopefully we can gain those two more seats as we move forward real soon. Is there something, something else that uh, to add? Yeah. Uh, we're presently looking at the brochure which was introduced oh, by. Yes. by uh, yeah. yeah, we're also taking a look at the brochure. We're working with Fritz as well, very closely with the orientation process that uh, that takes place for. Um, all employees that work on the mountain, uh, taking taking a look at the uh, cultural aspect and including um, including more uh, information as things are um, evolving since Kahukumana had started. There's different types of information that have transpired through studies, um, through cultural awareness that had uh, transpired. So we'd like to somehow include a more um, uh, newer manao, I guess you would say, to this process. Um, yeah. Uh, 
Ministries uh, on the board. We have uh, people from the different district that uh, are available to be a seat on that committee. Thank you for that question. That's a really good question. We've taken that stance, uh, I think two years ago when I was just a director, we've taken a strong stance to include more uh, diverse cultural um, practitioners from other districts. Currently we're fulfilling almost all the districts. I think the only one was Kau. But all the other districts are represented on the board right now. Yeah, I, I think uh, it would help a lot, you know, by having the district, you know, evolve because each district are totally different. Yes. And then we need to do all that because if you only concentrate on the on certain district, then the other district get left out. And I think, you know, growing up in Hawaii, I think that's part of our concern so that everybody can do that. You know, if I go to Kau, unless my genealogy line is in there, i okay. But if it's not, I get respect for the people there. Even to fish, to hunt, I have great respect. I was brought up that way, born and raised in Kyoko, just to give you a little bit of history, because I want to work with you folks, with the district, so that we can solve some of the things that we have to make it ready for the next generation. That's my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shane, and uh, hearing for your comments. This is uh, obviously a very significant part of what we do, and to have your input and uh, your monopoly is, is, is really essential. So thank you again for your efforts. Uh, Comprehensive Management Plan Updates. Well, it's been five years since the uh, Comprehensive Management Plan was approved in 2009, and so it is <clears throat> part of the principle of the CMP that it be adaptive, and that calls for, for periodic reviews of the CMP to um, review it to make sure that it's up to date and to modify as necessary and to include any changes that have occurred over the period of time. And so <clears throat> we, we, um, our first milestone is coming up and we did do a review of it, Fritz did a review of it, and uh, the first six chapters basically is uh, historical and background information. So it's what we did was we uh, looked at it and we've gone through and changed all the two word names to one word. We're going with the one word spelling. And also to update some of the information that has since changed. For example, the CMP calls for the university getting rulemaking authority. Well, we do have rulemaking authority. It's chapter seven that contains the management actions that we're responsible for implementing. And so in that review, we, f we feel that five years is a, such a short period of time, and it's not enough time to fully vet the management action. So we're not taking any real serious uh, steps to make major changes to the management actions. Um, but we did look at them, the same thing, we're changing the place names to one word. <clears throat> but we're also looking to, uh, for consistency in, in the management actions uh, we tried to clarify some of the uh, some of the actions. We wanted to make sure that there was one management action and not multiple actions over the same issue. For example, um, the CMP calls for the development of an invasive species plan. It also has the management actions on how you're going to do vehicle inspections. So we feel that there should just be one action, and so it doesn't get confusing. And we felt that the invasive species plan is the one that should have precedence over what an individual management action in the CMP. So we, we made those kind of changes, took out some of the redundancies in the in the CMP um, to make it clearer and uh, less burdensome. <clears throat> uh, the main thing is that it be consistent. Um, the basic principle for the CMP is protection of the resources and health and safety of those who are visiting mountain as well as those who work on the mountain. So we wanted to, we looked at those actions to make sure that it's consistent on, on our basic principles of why we're, what we're doing in terms of managing the mountain. 
Um, the CNP does call for a five-year progress report, and we felt that was being redundant because we have to give an annual report to the land board, and we felt that uh, doing a five-year, it, it wasn't really necessary. We're going to be doing another annual report uh, come in April of next year, and that will be essentially our five-year progress report. So in uh, what we're asking the board is to review this, uh, the changes primarily in Chapter 7. Um, if there's any comments, uh, any, any um, modifications you feel that need to be made other than what we've, what we've included, we would certainly appreciate it. Um, Fritz, do we have a deadline for this? <coughs> Um, I think we said the end of the calendar year. No, end of December. Um, for for comments, and then we'll. I mean, we we continue to catch stuff as we go through and read other work on other issues. Um, Amber's been actually Amber's been going through and doing correct all the place name spellings. Not I, uh, but. So yeah. uh, the next step would then uh, we would incorporate any comments that you would have. Uh, we talked to Kabu Kumana. We we had a consultation with Kabu Kumana. Any changes that they feel would be um, are appropriate, we would incorporate these into the CMP. We would have to come back to this board um, <clears throat> for your final approval. Then it has to go to the Board of Regents because the Board of Regents was made responsible by the land board to implement the CMP before we go to the land board for final changes. <clears throat> are there any questions? I would just encourage uh, Stephanie as you go through this, as you say, if some things appear awkward or redundant, is that those are pointed out and any changes that are required are made so that we statutorily are complying with everything, but it needs to work. And since this is kind of the first time through, uh, you know, changes should be anticipated. And if we need to change those policies, then we should do that. Excuse me. Barry? I have a question. Are you going to provide for public input into this process? Where do they, where do they yeah, um, we hadn't really considered that, but it's probably a very good point. Uh, what we, you know, what we're planning to do with the rulemaking is that we could probably do some open house uh, um, uh, activities for the public to be able to come in and review the CMP. Thank you. All right, uh, any other questions about the comprehensive management plan or the review process? But if not, we're to uh, item seven in the agenda announcements. Uh, I understand uh, Hank Ferguson uh, has an announcement he would like to make. Hello, Mike Uncle. I will introduce Hank to you. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I appreciate and all the good work that you do for us um, at OMKM. OMKM is taking a different approach and trying to reach out more to the community as much as possible. So we're going out to the schools. And during our tours, especially at the Waikoloa uh, Civic Club, there is a big push in regards to the Hawaiian Kingdom. So I think it's really important that we kind of take a step back and help ourselves understand the process and where we at with this kingdom, because it's it's a um, very interesting topic, and you know, Mauna is, is all part of this um, process. So we'll be having more um, discussions about this, and we just wanted to let the board know, um, and invite the board to learn more also about this. So this is Hank Ferguson. We spent the night together on October 6th <laughs> up on the mountain. <laughs> He occupied on a TMT site, but with the understanding um, why it was so important to keep the road open for the safety of the public and um, just access for our emergency vehicles. So we had a good discussion that night, learning more about the House of Nono, and he provided us with maps, Kaukumauna, I mean, with maps of the House of Nono, and the position of the kingdom. Um, kingdom laws and kingdom up on the mountain. So I think it's very important that we understand the process which is taking place currently and it was self-evident during the Civic Club Convention and throughout the discussions with the Department of Interior 
and throughout the state. So this is just part of the process of helping us understand where we are currently. Um, it's partnership between the Department of Hawaiian Homes and Office of Monarch Care Management. Our director sees it as a as a win-win uh, opportunity for us and the department. So we, we're moving on the right track. So I wanted to introduce Hanalei so we can get a better understanding. Thank you. Um, aloha kako. Uh, my name is Hanalei Ferguson. Uh, I'm here from, uh, from Poha. Um, I've been um, I've been honored to be on the mountain for many, many years. My, that was my backyard. Uh, my father made most of the roads up on the mountain, on the hunter's side, in the lower, lower reaches. Um, so I'm very familiar with it. I'm also a religious practitioner with the House of Lono, um, having been directly trained by Sam Mopi Lono. Um, anyway, um, what prompted a lot of this is this uh, groundbreaking of the TMT. Now, I don't think it's anybody's, so not a mystery to anybody that um, I and many Hawaiians object to the whole science reserve up there, uh, the astronomy facilities. But I also want to make it clear that we're not your enemies. We're not trying to be enemies to you. We're not trying to stop you. We're trying to make you look clear and understand that but the biggest problem that we have is that you don't seem to have an appreciation that you're in my temple. You are occupying my temple with very little regard to us. And we need to bridge that gap better because it's, it's, a, it's an unnecessary uncomfort for all of us. Um, it was very cold on the 6th of November. Um, but it was because of these, these uh, because of the lack of what I would consider clear communications um, as to what your intentions was, all I got is from the internet saying that you guys are going to block the road for this period of time. And, and, and it, for me, it was very important to present a notice. And um, I, I'm, I'm sorry I don't have a copy of the notice with me. My printer went down this morning as I was trying to print out some more copies. Um, but essentially, I was uh, alerting you to the fact that you are on Hawaiian Kingdom land. And there is no permission that's ever been given or sought for from the Hawaiian Kingdom government for your operations up on the mountain. Now, this may seem a little ludicrous and a little bit like off the wall kind of stuff, but it's not. This stuff is going on, uh, it is being handled, it's in the international courts right now. Um, uh, it's even being taught at the law school. Uh, um, Sai, uh being a professor, uh, uh, Professor Williamson Chang from the University of Hawaii Law School, uh, Guhio Volcher, which is another professor over there. The, this this conversation of, of the the existence of the continued existence of the Hawaiian Kingdom is very 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 strong and getting stronger and stronger by the day. And uh, again, it's, this is also in the international courts. Um, um, The, the intent here is, is that we need to find a better way to communicate. Had it not been, had it not been for this, I mean, for instance, I, I, I worked with you folks, I didn't even know this was happening. Um, I actually caught this information about the road, possible road closure uh, for the TMT groundbreaking uh, from a report from a vendor that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they have no kuleana also. And so, why are they being noticed that there's going to be a road closure and us who, who will probably be using that are, are not being informed? Um, I think we can do a lot better in that communication. And I, I certainly welcome that. Uh, Stephanie and I are, are getting closer along with Wally and I. And so I, I hope that we can have a, a little better bridge on how we're doing things. Had I known that my... I mean, I, I was going to go up there. I, I was up there to do other things besides... Um, give you the notice, but I, I have to admit that one of my, my intents was to give you a notice that you are trespassing on our Wayne Kingdom land. Um, there are many things that happen on the mountain that do not have to do with astronomy. 
Um, and they are very, very, very large things. These are things that have been done for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Probably not known to most because most people are not in that spiritual realm or part of a religious order that would allow you to know those kind of things. Um, what is what I thought was very important, um, really it's, it's really a courtesy. When I provided you the notice, it was not to be a threatening thing, but it was really to give you notice that there was something to look at here, and that is whether or not <coughs> Under, under, even under state law, under the Seed of Lands Trust, there's a question of, of whether or not uh, astronomy is part of the five designated beneficiaries of the Seed of Lands Trust, even though education does come under one of them. But there's a, as we now understand that information keeps unfolding, and as it unfolds, more, more ways of looking at things become apparent. And so, um, under the Ceded Lands Trust, there's five designated beneficiaries. Um, astronomy is not one of them. Okay? It's a very important point because that's going to be raised shortly. That, that is going to come to fruition or come to a courtroom, I believe, very, very soon. If not that in itself, it may be from the very top of the thing, which is the lack of treaty of session with the state of Hawaii. There is no treaty of annexation, so there is no ceded lands. And um, this has been brought up in the international courts. It has also been brought up through Professor Chang and a, a group of uh, law professors who, who contacted or wrote to um, um, William Holder, Attorney General for the United States, trying to get a response as to whether or not the Hawaiian Kingdom exists and whether or not the state of Hawaii actually exists because by the presumption of law, the Hawaiian Kingdom still does exist and there's nothing that has been presented to our people that shows any, any authority to assert a jurisdiction in my country by the United States, and they have refused to answer that. It may, like I said, it may sound preposterous, but it is a reality. Um, I don't know if you know of this report called, um, uh, it's, it's a UN war report. Uh, it has to do with conflicts on all different continents and to what degree of it. Hawaii just missed this, this past publication, but it's going to be a next year's publication as being an occupied country. And this is important to understand, especially when you're dealing with multiple millions of dollars, multiple national stuff, because the question is, are you dealing with the right people? I'm not saying you're, you are or you're not. I'm saying that so far, there has been no, no attempt by the United States to refute the presumption of law that the Hawaiian Kingdom continually exists. And therefore, the state of Hawaii does not um, and avoiding the question does not mean that the, the principles of law don't apply. Um, in fact, it's even stated in, in the United Nations that just because we don't have a government that is operational does not mean that our rights have been forfeited. And so, just, just on that statement alone, as you folks are well aware, the ceded lands are the stolen lands or confiscated lands of the Hawaiian Kingdom. So. That's if there was ceded lands. That's if there was actually a treaty of session, which there is no evidence that there ever was. And so I encourage you, because I would like to know for myself too, is there something the United States can prove to us, show to us in documentation form, that there is an actual treaty of session that gives an authority for the United States asserted jurisdiction in my country, the Hawaiian Kingdom. And so as I talked to, um, the, uh, on the um, morning of the 7th, you know, the, um, well, start off with the night of the 6th, um, when I went up there, there were several um, security people around that never bothered to stop me or ask me what I was doing up there, where I was going, 
or anything. It wasn't until I had settled down and it already got dark that um, people, uh, including uh, the Rangers, including the police department and several other people, so there were four times they came and told me I was going to get arrested, but nobody could tell me for what. <coughs> what was I doing that was arrestable? And, and they can understand that there's really nothing I am doing, but there's something projected, but nobody would tell me what was going on. It wasn't until the, the next morning, because I refused to leave. I mean, I was doing other things besides dealing with the 30 millimeter. In fact, they, it was quite unfortunate that <coughs> I um, got so cold that I wasn't able to carry on with some of the, the religious stuff that I wanted to do up there, which was connecting the, the summits of the Monica and Halakala together visually so you could see some of these things that we work on that you may not be aware of and maybe that would help help with your appreciation of what the Hawaiians do there. Anyway, um, in talking with Wally um, uh, yesterday, we met for lunch, and I was talking to him about, you know, it, it's really important that whether or not we agree with each other on, on these real deep statements that I'm making, like no authority or no jurisdiction, um, these kind of things. They may seem ludicrous, but they are factual that there are questions in law being presented. And therefore, it would behoove you folks at least to know what it is that we keep arguing about and why we keep saying you have no jurisdiction here. And, and if, 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 I think it would, it would give a, a greater understanding, a greater appreciation for each other to understand why we keep fighting for what we do. Um, Actually, it wasn't until um, the morning of the 7th that Wally had come in and, and it was kind of rough the way he came in. He came in to tell me that they're going to, they're bringing up the shirts and everybody else and they're going to come and remove me anyway. And I kept on asking him, what are you removing me from for what reason? And nobody could give me an answer. And finally, Wally was telling me that um, the layout of the road, which I even, when I went in there, I was going to have a, Groundbreaking here, you can only get one car at a time through here. So, when he told me that it had to do with the logistics of, of traffic, of public safety and traffic movement, and being able to get a, uh, an emergency vehicle out, that got me interested to be more cooperative in in your from your standpoint. But uh, again, uh, you know, he was telling me that there was even maps on where each vehicle was supposed to stop and park, so we had this train-like thing to be able to move out. And, and even though I was off the road of any known, uh, any road, um, the way he, he, he told me about the way the vehicles are t to be parked in the circular uh, area, um, I realized too that it, it would, I guess I would be in the way. But even that is not enough reason to be arresting me or to threaten me with towing my truck down for $1,200. You know, and it, this, this, this is a problem. This, this creates additional problems. Um, when I was told that there was 50 SWAT people coming up to the mountain, I asked myself, you have 50 SWAT people for what? What exactly are these SWAT people going to be doing? There was not only 50 SWAT people, there were almost 100 people down in Kualkaloa waiting for some kind of intervention. Why? <clears throat> Why do we get to that point? And one of the problems that really bothered me was when I found out TMT is all paying for it. And so I thought to myself, what do we have, private armies now? Uh, I mean, are you going to be, uh, what was going to happen? Was somebody going to shoot me? Or was I going to be dragged down the hill for praying? This, is, this not, might not seem a lot to you, but for me, it is a monumental thing. It's monumental. That's why I even got... I even broke down and came down to Kahubana to bring down maps, which I would never show anybody because it's not, it's not the kuleana of you folks. But because of the way you folks are moving, I have to do something to at least show you that what I'm talking about is not just a figment of my imagination. These things actually exist. There are places here that we, that we go to, and we need to be able to do it unbridled. I myself, if Keiko tells me to be up on one of the booths at 11.30 at night, 
I'm certainly not going to stop and wait to ask anybody if I can go. Uh, that's just not how it works. Um, and at the same time, uh, again, I, I don't come in here, I actually come here as a friend. I'm trying to befriend you folks and under, let you guys understand. I'm approachable. Let's talk because there's a big gap here. There's a big gap here and we have a long history of not being able to communicate correctly and it only gets worse. You know, so again, I'm attempting to make a bridge where we can communicate a lot easier and to talk about some of the things. Whether, whether or not there, there are things that we accept as truths or not, know that these questions are being asked in the international field and in the legal fields. And they have a direct impact on, on your future up on Mauna Kea. Um, so anyway, um, just to make it short, this is just an introduction. Um, I, I, um, I, I, I gave Wally a, a video to look at last night. It's, it's um, a very, it's a four hour long video. It's very, very, you know, any, anything over 50 minutes is a little hard to watch. But um, it's, it's so powerful and so compelling because it fills in so many gaps on the legal history and where we are in the international arena in re regaining our position as the sovereign of the Hawaiian kingdom. And so, while he did take the time to look at it, and it, it, it's absolutely amazing what he, he felt too, because, and I, I, I actually would like to invite you to also look at this. It's, it, like I said, it's very long, but it's also one of those kind of things that you start looking at, you don't want to put it down, because it fills in so many little gaps of information that even I had. had I've been at this for 40 years, you know, and to find something that actually fills in the little holes where I accept, geez, now wait a minute, that didn't look right here. When you can see it from a legal standpoint, when you understand that it's not just a popular decision, it's a matter of law, then it becomes a different story. It becomes a lot easier to understand that it's just not my decision, you or I make an agreement. There are laws in place that need to be followed if we are a nation of laws. And according to Barack Obama last night, we are a nation of laws. So my thing is that if we are a nation of laws, then we should all be lawful and be mindful of these things that may be potentially conflicting. And so uh, this was just to be a, uh, I thank Wally and, and, and Stephanie for uh, inviting me here. Uh, and um, I have many resources. If you folks would like to find out more of, of, of what is going on in the kingdom, I can, I can go as far as even bringing in uh, professors of law to explain to you some of these things. I can bring in to you people like Keanu Sai who can give you the international arena part of it that's going on. If that would be helpful to you folks to understand what's going on. And so I'm here just to give you that invitation to let you know that I'm available to try to help to bridge this gap so we can work more in harmony with each other. And not always, like, when you see us Hawaiians, oh, we've got a conflict coming. That's not, that's not the way it should be. I don't want to go up to thinking I'm going to be blocked right off the bat because it creates a, it creates a non-pono environment and ambience. Ambience is the key to that temple. And so when you have, when you, when, when we're on these sojourns, Spiritual sojourns, yeah. Every little thing, every little thing tells you how you are supposed to move. And so, not having a communications and having been looked at as almost like an invader or what's he going to be up to now, changes the atmosphere, changes the ambience of what we're doing. It's all about light and, and life and abundance, yeah. And so, Again, it's to find a way to build bigger bridges, better bridges that are easier to cross. Um, so we don't have, uh, we don't have necessary conflict. We can, with, there is the, there, there is always a way to work something out if we take the time to be patient enough to listen to each other. And so again, um, I'm Annalie Ferguson. I'm at your disposal, and I'd be happy to provide you with any kind of information that may help you determine what you want to do with these questions.
Thank you. Anybody want to have any questions? Uh, uh, I have. Yes, sir. I have a question. How many groups of you, I'm a Hawaiian too. Yes, sir. How many groups, I know you one of the groups, how many groups are trying to put us Hawaiian people together? Can you name me some of the groups? I can name you many, many groups, Uncle and but No, no, no. Just tell me five, ten. It's all that I want to hear. And then, okay. Okay. No, no, but don't tell me about it. Okay. I can you tell ask, you there's at least five and at least... Okay, five. Okay, leave it at five. Okay. Okay, the yeah. next question I get. Were you born on this island on a home state? No, not on the homestead, but I was born on this island. Yes, I was born in Wyoming. Okay. The next question. I born and raised on the homestead. And 90 years, I did 24. Hey, sorry for the time, but I think it's very important. I want to say because I want this brother, because he talk about working together, communicating. I for that. Okay. My grandfather, we just celebrated Kyoka. Where I was born and raised, right across of the bay, Puhi Bay, 1924, December. My grandmother was a Nisi in 1924. In Hawaiian homes, November 17 and 18, but 15 and 16, we had a great celebration, 90 years. Okay? Then, 90 years, I fought generation on the homestead. My grandmother was first. My great-grandmother was second in 1925. And she went there. That's two generations. My dad is third. I'm fourth. My children are fifth. My grandchildren are sixth. My sister, who is the oldest, her great is number seven. I'm watching this whole movement very carefully, okay. and you folks are all on the right track. That's why I asked you five groups. Before we can say anything to other five groups, I have another question. Yes. Did you ever go to all the homestead, your group, every homestead on the two is, uh, we cannot go to Nihau and go whole lobby. So that six island. Did you folks go and educate us, the people? Did you first go there? Um, no. no. Okay, wait, wait, stop. No, no, no. I don't want to come from, I don't want to hold up people's okay. time. Okay. But I can deal with you after a one with Wally. Okay. Because Wally, born and raised in another generation in Kyokoha. Okay? So, I really like educate you so you will be the first group. I heard Kiana Sai, I heard it long years ago. But you know what my dream is all about? Ten years from today, we're going to celebrate 100 years. I might be here, I might not be here. But I already charged my oldest grandchild, who is 21, he's going to be 31. I'm talking to him. But before that happens, I want to make sure all the five groups, or many more, we're on the same sheet of music, music you educate us first, okay? Because I can go on and on. DOI, Department of Interior, drop the ball. Okay, so let's go to, let's not break up in groups because I know you get the cocoa. I know you, my family. I know Wally, in my family. Everybody here get the cocoa. It's my family. And I like to make things right. And I think I sit on many boards. I volunteer my time. Let me share a little bit history. If we come to my kingdom, I want to make sure I still get my U.S. citizenship. And I'll tell you why. Number one, I was born and raised here. Number two, I serve my country. Number three, I work for government. Number four, I so happy I getting what you call not Medicare. Okay? Now with all of these, I get so much entitlement that I can leave. And through my culture, learning ocean, land, and mountain, I can survive. So, as all I'm going to say, sorry everybody over here, I don't apologize, but I thought I'd give you a little bit history of myself. I sit on all board, on the Veterans Board, 
on the Department of Hawaiian Homes today, I don't want to argue or activist or that. Those who was up there is my relatives. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So we're sure. all good. We all, we all understand each other, but I really don't want to do that. But I thought I'd share a little bit issue of myself. And when you get time, Keanu Sai get time, I'm only going to give you one challenge. Before you educate the rest of them, you go to all the communities and I will go with you or you guys group and educate us and I see what's going to happen, okay? I, I, I will And, and I saw the President, uh, Chairman, and everybody <coughs> here, but I had to say, because I took everything from you and I appreciate it very much. Now we're going to make it right. So that it sounds to me, am I correct or am I wrong? No, no, you're very right. Okay. okay. And I thank you very much for that offer because I'm going to take you up on that. Okay, um, I good. End of conversation, can we close? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, so anyway, thank you, Uncle. Uh, and this is part of what I'm talking about, that even for us as Hawaiians, we need to outreach into our own community. But because of we've had such rocky road in the past, and so many, I have to call them clowns because they're almost like clowns, uh, acting like they're kings or whatever like that, when I believe what Uncle was iterating on is education is the key, and this is why I, I brought myself here to introduce the no, uh, I agree I am, with you. I agree with you everything. Yeah. But you said everything, and I thought was the point that I had to say something. So, you know, I understand that. But let's go educate the rest of my Ohana. Yeah, okay. that's, that's great. And, and then the other, one, you give me the four names of the other group, because I'm going to make them follow you. You come to this island first, you're not going to tell you why. And you got to come to Kyokaha first. Okay, but that's where I was born. Kyokaha is key. Huh? Kyokaha is key. Kyokaha is the key, eh? Yes, yes, And indeed. Kyokaha is where? Left field or right field? Kyokaha is right in the middle. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because we don't know whether we're going left or right. But I know where I'm going. Okay, all good, brother. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mahalo. Again, any other questions I can perhaps? Well, thank you. Uh, Really, how life are coming and, and, and sharing your, your thoughts and your wisdom. You know, it, it's 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 a very complex issue, obviously. And I think that the key that you hit on and things that that really apply here is that really the understanding of one another and the appreciation for what each group is trying to accomplish. Uh, we're not a, a, a venue where we can decide legal issues as far as ownership or. Uh, the validity of the state of Hawaii or the kingdom of Hawaii, whatever, but but we, part of our kuleana is that understanding and appreciation of one another, and, and, and I personally appreciate you coming here and sharing your thoughts because it's, it's something that we need to keep in mind as we go forward because uh, as so much in life, it's not so much what you do, it's how you do it and yes, uh, how you treat people along the way, and, and if we can show respect for one another and appreciate one another, it may not solve all of our problems, may not answer all the questions, but it will sure make our life far more enjoyable. So I, I thank you personally for, for taking the time to come here today. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> all right, uh, board members, if there are any other questions or comments uh, now, or if not, I'd like to, uh, uh, do we have an announcement in the next meeting, or are you going to circulate as usual? Okay, we'll, 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 Don, we'll, we'll contact us later, but. Thank you very much for your time today, and thank you for all of you your time. Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy holidays. <laughs> all of the above.